Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and again, thank you for joining us. This is part two of our discussion regarding uh, evaluation and treatment of medial temporal lobe epilepsy. The first session reviewed overall evaluation regarding temporal lobe epilepsy. This current session will review technical nuances for anteromedial temporal lobectomy and selective amygdala hippocampectomy. Dr. Dennis Spencer, Harvey Cushion Professor and Chairman of Neurosurgery at Yale University, who is a mentor of mine, is our expert discussant. Uh, Dr. Spencer, thank you again, and please go ahead. Thank you, Aaron. Um, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to go over this um, in a technical way. So let's uh, start by discussing the um, resection as as one knows, uh, this evolution of more medial resections began in the late uh, 70s uh, through, through the 80s. And in general, uh, the resection, as, as uh, I perform in any way, is, revolves around a three to three and a half centimeter uh, um, neocortical resection of the pole, involving just the middle and the inferior temporal gyrus as access to the temporal horn and as access to the resection of the important structures that provide the, the triad of epileptogenesis in the medial temporal lobe, that is the interrhinal cortex, the amygdala, uh, and the hippocampus. And when one uses this with the standard uh, concordant evaluation in mesiotemporal sclerosis, uh, you know, this involves the same kind of technique as if one tailors this based upon an intracranial study if, uh, in a patient who has non-concordant uh, evaluation and requires, uh, requires intracranial uh, electrodes. Um, there are, just trying to get this marker down here, the uh, resection of the uh, amygdala, uh, interrhinal cortex, and hippocampus is, uh, is illustrated uh, here. Uh, can be transcortical, as, uh, as we have described. It does uh, allow uh, preservation of the temporal neocortex. <clears throat> in, in our hands, uh, we will do the three to three and a half uh, centimeter pole resection, both on the left and the right side. Uh, we see no reason to, to uh, alter this based upon uh, which temporal lobe, and it allows us, of course, then to be able to compare outcomes <clears throat> reliably. Uh, if you're doing the same operation. Uh, the, at about the same time that uh, I was designing the uh, resection of the pole and preserving the neocortex, uh, Ghazi Azergil was uh, doing this transylvian uh, based upon the patients that, uh, that Wieser was identifying with basal medial uh, temporal lobe epilepsy. Uh, just uh, very briefly, this involves, as illustrated here, uh, the pole resection of the middle and inferior temporal gyrus with sparing of the superior temporal gyrus <clears throat> in all uh, uh, documented uh, language outcome uh, studies. This is an area that is, uh, that is predominantly uh, free of language on the dominant side, whereas in the superior temporal gyrus, language can't be distributed uh, throughout that uh, region. The Wernicke's area can be distributed throughout the uh, superior temporal gyrus. And then this illustrates the basal view <clears throat> with the total resection involving as much of the tail to the turn of the tail of the hippocampus behind the pulvinar of the thalamus after you have resected the, the temporal pole. Uh, this is just a cadaver <clears throat> um, illustration of the, um, of the pole resection. Let me try to change my paper under the mouse. Um, and this is, so here is sparing of the superior temporal gyrus. Uh, the, the landmarks, uh, as illustrated in this cadaver, or the resection to the temporal horn, one sees the temporal horn here, we've resected down uh, at three centimeters uh, posterior to the pole, down to the fusiform gyrus arachnoid, followed that back. Uh, as it then you know, leads us to the uh, temporal horn. One opens the one opens the temporal horn. 
and uh, the 